<laughs> All right, welcome to Straight Out of College. I'm Daniel. Uh, Sawyer's not here, and then we have Ashley Crocanini. What? That's how you pronounce your last name, right? Yes. I right. actually don't know. You really don't know how to say. No, that it's name? like Crochane. Crocane. It's Cochran. Cochran. I always think it's like Cro. <laughs> Cochran. That was a test, just wow. to make sure you knew. Okay. All right. Uh, so we did work together for like a whole year. Yeah, I know, big deal. Okay. I mean, I never called you by your last name, though. You know. I mean, yeah, but. I guess I feel like I make a point to learn my friend's name. Okay, well, mine's easy, oh. though. Mine's easy. Okay, well, I learn all their pickles' names. Cock. Okay. It's really not that hard. I got it. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, so, what do you have going on right now in the life of Ashley Cochran? Um, a lot. It's, like, really crazy being a, I guess, first semester senior in college. I have a meeting with my advisor next week to schedule spring classes which is really crazy because mm. I'm graduating in May looking for jobs um, life is just really really busy with work and like organizations and stuff like that and like really like prioritizing your time being a senior for sure is something that I'm learning to do mm. Definitely. I'm a terrible host what is your major again <laughs> my major is communications All right. and then my minor is in marketing and then you're a senior so you'll be yes. graduating next May okay yes I usually, so, like, I usually have this, like, backup script where I, like, go through a certain set of questions, but, like, I've gotten to the point where, like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Cool, cool. And so, um, so, yeah, so, you're on your senior year. Um, how are you, have you started applying for jobs yet, or? Yeah, so, that process has just been, like, very overwhelming. I went to the job fair a couple weeks ago, and, like, that went really well, so I've been applying to jobs here and there. It's just one of those things I'm kind of stuck on applying because I don't really know what I want or where I want to be located. So therefore, applying for positions with certain companies in certain areas kind of almost seems silly because like I, I don't know what I want. I'm stuck between staying in the area to be like with my family or moving to somewhere like Orlando, Florida to be with my sister and like much warmer, exciting place. Yeah. So I like I do the math in my head of how many war months there are compared to not war months and yeah. it's like fifty fifty. Yeah. Which is kinda <laughs> it's it really like oh. is. <laughs> but then I like to think that like, okay, well, October through December is fun, so it's yeah. okay because you got all the seasons. That's very true. So it's really just like January through mid-April where it sucks. I guess I've never really thought about that. I guess I just, I'm just i not a winter person, so once January hits, I feel like January to April feels like it's a whole year in itself of mm -hmm. just like horrible like yeah. weather all the time. Plus it's hard being a college student in cold weather because you have to, like, walking walk around, outside, yeah. freezing. Not fun. Horrible. Yeah, um, that's why I'm glad I'm graduating this semester. I don't have to deal with yeah. like the depressing semester in, in sp spring, quote unquote. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, me personally, I've I've applied to one job specifically that I actually got, and maybe an interview. I had to write an essay, so that's a good sign. But that is a good sign. I don't think I'm gonna get the interview just because I messed up. So you know how you're supposed to like go in detail, read in depth their whole website before mm -hmm. like doing yeah. stuff. So I skimmed through it. I had like a general idea of what it was, but like there's one thing that I didn't read that I probably should have. And <laughs> they had a, a webinar, which is like a a little um, online class thingy where you like talk and stuff. <laughs> and just in case you didn't know what a webinar was, and um, they basically informed us like the day after I sent my essay, like more in detail stuff, and I probably should have waited the day beforehand too. Did you know that they were gonna send you that the next day? I week? did, but I just wanted to send oh, my essay because I, I was Daniel, just antsy. No. I made a mistake. <laughs> yeah, man. Is it local? Where is the job? So the job, I talked about it last podcast, but it's called Venture for America. So basically it's like a program where you, it's kind of like a middleman where they, um, hook you up with different jobs that you can apply for all across the country, usually like startups, and then uh, they find like the best fit job for you. That's cool. So super cool. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if I want to go any further in the process because I made a mistake, but we'll see <laughs> how it goes. Um, but other than that, I have just been so busy. Like yeah. I, I should be applying for jobs and I am not really. Eh. So You got this podcast going. 
That's yeah. Really all you need, I'm gonna yeah. If I just stick to it, I'm gonna make all my money off of here. Yeah. I have already had a uh, I sponsored for uh, Stryline socks. You might be aware of them. I feel like. Did you, you did you not hear the podcast I episode? I didn't hear the episode, okay. but <laughs> love socks. Like I know I about do. like I do. you and the socks. Uh huh. So, so that doesn't surprise me. That was kind of like a kind of a gimmick, but also I did get free socks out of it. So wow, I bet that was your favorite part. It was. I got Baker Mayfield socks too. Wow. And I love Baker Mayfield. Uh, so that was that was fun. That's really um, cool. Yeah. What's your favorite pair of socks that you own? <sighs> I know. I ask a really stressful question. This is tough. Yeah. I mean, I want to say Baker Mayfield, but I have so many socks to pick from. Before you got the Baker Mayfield socks. Mm-hmm. Like, out of the socks that, like, you purchased yourself before you had that job and were given the socks. Mm, Take your time. This really. is difficult. <laughs> There's just so much to pick from. There are. Oh, man. Oh, you know what? I had these really nice, uh, stretchy cat socks, but cat socks. I lost them, and also they're kind of out. They're, like, worn out, mm. but they're pretty yeah. cool. Cats are the best. They're probably my favorite. But like, Are you they a cat s- or a dog person? Oh, dog. Okay. I just like cats. I respect for, it. I like cats for the memes. Okay. So. I respect it. What about you, cat or dog? I would say I'm pretty even, but I think for, like, my younger life, cat person but then once i get married and have a family definitely dog Mm. now like if you have a cat with a dog personality i would be okay with that because those do exist they're a little more rare yeah but more fun um like my sister my sister has some cats with dogs personalities um but growing up i had cats with cats personalities and they're very boring yeah they don't do much no they do not but yeah um but yeah so you you are in aopi how's that it's busy, as it, always. Yeah. It never really calms down. Um, it's one of those things I thought, oh, well, I'm a senior, so there won't be, like, nearly as much going on. But mm-hmm. if anything, I'm, like, equally as busy, like, if not more, probably. Um, yeah, crazy. I'm currently the vice president of chapter development, which is the um, position for planning sisterhoods and stuff, which is what I'm going to after this. Um, but then that ends in December. And then I haven't really told a lot of people this but I guess I'll tell you and everyone listening. Oh, man. <laughs> um, so I ran for Songfest director again, and I got it. So Woo-hoo. I guess I'm doing Songfest again. <laughs> um, so that's, I'm, like, in between being super excited and also, wow, I'm doing Songfest again. And yep. spring semester will not be stress-free at all. Here we go again. <laughs> but it'll be great, though. I'm excited. Let me know if you need a drummer if I'm into it. I will. I'll let you know. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Um, and so then... Other than that, you're also a tour guide, aren't you? Or are you no longer a tour guide? As of, like, three weeks ago, Oof. I'm not a tour guide. <laughs> I was really sad about it, but it was kind of one of those things of, do you know what a minimalist is? I can Have make you heard that an term? assumption of what it is. So I think it's, like, a new, like, millennial term that's okay. being thrown around of, like, the kiddos and all that, of, like, being someone who, like, prioritizes, like, only specific relationships and only doing so much... Uh, like obligations with their times not being involved in all organizations only owning like so many number of clothes or like decorations in your house like living like a minimalist life is like living off of what you need and like not being like a super busy hectic chaotic Mm -hmm. person is kind of how I take it so one of my goals for 2019 was to become not a minimalist but like more so of a minimal that's a fun one to say (laughs) minimalist Um, But I'm kind of failing, but also this semester I've, like, definitely taken steps of, like, removing myself from, like, certain, not, like, certain obligations necessarily, but, like, a lot of the craziness that wasn't everything what I needed for my senior year, Mm -hmm. and since I, like, I have an internship outside of school, and so I kind of needed to focus on that and then kind of, like, my lasting UT relationships a little bit and I was already so busy I hardly had any time to tour guide that it kind of got to the point where it wasn't really fair to the tour guides to have me on the team because I could never really be there so I just kind of decided to peace out and I cried my last tour when I said goodbye it was really sad because I loved it but it's definitely one of those things I just needed to remove so would you say minimalist it's kind of like they take quicker showers they (laughs) they like buy less food yeah. And they, do like, and they, like, focus more on specific things. So, yes. like, instead of, like, multiple organizations, it's, like, one organization, but you're all in. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. 
I feel like I try to be a minimalist in too many things. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, it's a problem. Because, so, I am taking, uh, I'm only taking 12 credit hours, but, like, like, this one class is crazy amount of time. Mm-hmm. And then um, I also got my intern, it's not really even an internship, because I'm not getting credit hours, I'm just getting, like, paid yeah. to do, like, 24 hours. So, that's not too bad. But then, like, on top of that, like, I'm also creating a startup company, and Ooh. potentially, we're seeing how it goes, I need, like, money. Apparently, you need, yeah. like hundreds of thousands of dollars to like yeah. do that or whatever I've so heard that. i um how much i have like five thousand so it's i mean you only have like ninety five thousand <laughs> to go so you're good and then i'm also there. <laughs> have to pay off my tuition so mm. if you look at that that's another sixteen thousand. yeah so you're you're getting there <laughs> you're you've made you've made the foot in the door here you're, you're getting there yeah yeah it's like two steps backwards and then like a thousand steps forward. I mean, hey, that's Maybe. like that's like the roller coaster of life, you know. Yeah. It's not like a straight. It's not a straight line. No, it's, it's uh, it goes coaster. straight down, and that's it. But no, okay, it goes straight down, and then when you think you've hit the bottom, then you go right back up again. You know, you know the. You know, I used to work at Cedar Point, Daniel. Yeah. I know all about this stuff. Uh huh. All you, about roller coasters. You know the one, uh, the one roller coaster where it's on social media, but like. It does the seven loop de loops and like it hypothetically makes like it makes you unconscious and then you die, but it's a lot of fun. You know, I haven't <laughs> heard of that. Probably because <laughs> if I did, that would terrify me. Yeah. Is it in one of those like weird countries that like has like it's not weird, a real crazy roller, stuff? It's not a real roller coaster. It's oh. more of like a, it's more of like you know how like in physics class they have the roller coaster questions. Oh yeah. It's yeah, kind yeah. of like okay. that, but they apply human biology to it or whatever yeah. so like it's like seven loops and with the speed that you go and with like centripetal force that's involved with it and everything it's basically it's impossible to survive through it oh good but yeah <laughs> i didn't do well in physics in high school that was not my strength yeah physics was not my but thing. so yeah that's that's fun yeah. um but that's not your life not yet. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, Your life's a roller coaster that you get to survive. Yeah, mine's yeah. like, it's like that loop de loop thingy, but I'm only going half as fast. That's fair. Yeah, That's so I'll survive metaphor. it. You should like <laughs> copyright that. Yeah. That quote. Put it on a canvas. <laughs> but uh yeah that's one thing i'm really disappointed about i haven't went to cedar point yet i'm going on saturday are you yeah aopi is going for our annual halloween sisterhood okay is it like the volunteer work that you usually do no or? no it's like an actual yeah you so go there. aopi doesn't do the volunteer work there because that's a crazy experience it is as someone who worked there for an entire season and mm-hmm. wow what a time um, so no, we don't do that. We just go just to go and okay. go for the day and have a good time and get some screams in. It's not supposed to rain, is it? I don't know. I hope not. It's but, like, it's always you know. 50-50 in Hollow Weekends. Yeah, always which is 50-50. Annoying. But I can't ride roller coasters anyways, so what? that doesn't really affect me because I'm just in the haunted houses. Oh, you're just into the haunted houses? Yeah. Okay, so you don't do roller coasters all that I much? mean, I love roller coasters, but I can't ride them. Uh, I have that weird <laughs> blood platelet disorder. We don't need to talk about it, but I'm not okay. really supposed to ride roller coasters. Okay, gotcha. So gotcha. I used to when I was younger, and I loved them. And then yeah. we like found out about it when I was in middle school, and I was devastated because I was a huge coaster fanatic. Aww. Wanted to do all of the crazy things. Now I feel bad. It's okay. It's <laughs> fine. I got to work at a cedar at an amusement park, so it was kind of like riding roller coasters all summer. It was yeah. fine. I'm like that purse lady that holds everything while everyone goes on the ride. Gotcha. And I take pictures. Well, <laughs> on to another note. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, going off of the cliche questions that I ask everyone, All right. how would you say your experience has been from freshman year up to now? Like, how much have you changed? Oh, I've changed a lot. Um, I, to be super cheesy and sobby, and sobby? That's not a thing. Sobby? To be like, to sob? Cheesy and, like... I guess just cheesy, just mainly cheesy. I have loved UT more than anything ever. Um, I'm really sad to be graduating in less than a year now. Um, But yeah, I was just talking to my freshman roommate, Emily Hussing. Love her. I was talking to her the other day, 
about how much we both have changed. We um, were roommates together in Ottawa West our freshman year, and our very first night of college, um, our roommates and like everyone ever probably their first night of college like went to the parties like down the street and instead we stayed back and we were literally like talking about Jesus in our rooms because we were scared little freshmen and yeah so we had a good time um but yeah I definitely had almost like zero confidence coming into college after high school high school was not my thing stories for later um but came into high or came into college was very nervous about everything, didn't know how I felt about Toledo, didn't know how I felt about my major, classes, friends, literally anything. And then I found AOPI a couple weeks later and fell in love with the girls in AOPI and they made me feel like very welcome and wanted um, and valued on this campus. And kind of from there, honestly, I owe a lot of my growth to AOPI specifically and just kind of Greek life as a whole. It's a very accepting and supportive um, group of people. And they've just really pushed me to kind of not only reach for my goals, but they've set kind of new goals for me that I never really thought I could have accomplished myself. They've um, had a lot of confidence in me and my abilities within different positions, within my major, um, in uh, like fu- like in my future career and stuff like that. Um, you know, like some of my sisters, like they've helped me write resumes that have made me a thousand times more professional looking on paper than I yeah. could have been. Um, and so it's just, I really owe so much to them. And from AOPI, I joined a bunch of other organizations, um, became a tour guide. I was in Rockathon for a couple of years, um, got the internship that I currently have now. Um, I was able to meet my friends all, like all through um, that process. So it's definitely, I've gained so much confidence in not only kind of who I am, but also my abilities and my strengths. And I've learned to take constructive criticism a lot better, and I, like, am very much more aware of almost, this is like an oxymoron, but, like, the strengths of my weaknesses and how Mm -hmm. I can improve on them. Yeah. Um, And I, like, stand up for myself a thousand percent more than I ever used to. I don't let people walk on me anymore. Um, And I've just really kind of been able to grow and become a leader within my chapter and within this university and just... I've been able to figure a lot of stuff out in college, and college was definitely, like, everything I wanted it to be, um, whereas high school was nothing like I wanted it to be. Um, I'm, like, a very cliche gal that wanted high school to be the best thing ever, and then it totally wasn't, and then I wanted college to be the best thing ever, and it totally was. So I'm really sad to be graduating in less than a year, because I don't know what I'm going to do after that. (laughs) Sad. Go Rockets. Go Rockets. So one thing that I kind of noticed throughout my time at UT is that, um, like, a lot, so there are a lot of classes that I did like and definitely taught me a lot. Like, there's classes I'm taking right now that are awesome. Yeah. But then there's, like, also a lot of classes that, like, I don't oh, really yeah. need to take. Like, why, why do I need to know history, you know? Like, yeah. I get it, but at the same time, it's, like, I'd rather not pay $1,000 to take this class, nope. you know? Yep. Um, which is brought me to the conclusion why why don't they have something where it's like an alternate version of college where you don't have to pay a bunch of money to go to college but you still get the experience of like living in a residence hall and like hanging out with people like for even just like a year or two years because I feel like that's the reason why a lot of people go to college is because everyone else is doing it and they want that experience of breaking out of their comfort zone and like doing something new because I know for me like I went to college because, like, yeah, engineering, and from what I thought it was back then. I forgot you started engineering. I did. Oh, my gosh, what a throwback. (laughs) Yeah, but, (laughs) you know, like, I could do it. It's just that I didn't want to. Yeah. So I chose to go through media communication because I kind of more aligned with my my passions and all that. Yeah. But, um, like, I feel like a lot of times people go to college just because they want to get the experience, which is a completely good reason to do college I think because just organizations alone like I've learned so much from being in KDR and uh, (laughs) even even being on the alternate frisbee team like things you wouldn't think about just communication skills and all that and just how to get street smart and it's I feel like it'd be really cool if there is some sort of way where say you you're okay with working just like your typical factory job or or retail or any of that but you want to gain that social experience so that way 
if you wanted to move up in the system, you'd be, be yeah. you'd be more confident about doing it. You sure. Know? You mean like like a test run living experience versus like just being actually thrown in the real world where you like live it's, in that kind yeah, of Yeah, it's kind of like, there. I think there should be some sort of way where people of your age range can still hang out within like a, a, an area, basically like college how you have, it's like a community basically. Everyone's yeah. living with everyone, everyone's going through the same thing. If you can like recreate that, but without uh, all, all the, the expenses, all the expenses like a, a very cheap version of that. Like, yeah. honestly, I think it would be so much fun to go to summer camp where it's like college, except all it is is about meeting people and then just taking random classes that you want to do just because they're fun. Yeah. And, like, I would I, – I don't know if I could say I would do that from now, like, looking <laughs> back, but I think a lot of people would do that over college, and then it may be, like, there would be some other things where it would teach them, like, that could – kind of go into real life but yeah i think you just came up with your million dollar idea no okay created. well maybe there but even better i have a billion dollar idea so Ooh. that's that's nothing okay <laughs> all right but no i agree i think um i think it's really hard because you know college isn't for everybody yeah. because i mean obviously it's crazy expensive um and you know i find in my experience when you ask 50 year old people that are successful in their career you ask oh what did you major in in college and like 90 percent of the time it has nothing to do with what their successful career has been in so it's kind of like okay yeah I got that degree but I didn't use any of it so I think college is like I've learned so much more in college about the relationship like through the relationships that I've built more than anything I've gotten out of the textbook not that obviously my classes aren't super beneficial and obviously teaching me so much for the career that I currently do want to go into but it's I don't know you just like you learn how to be a person I guess you know like when you're in high school you're just like there's just like this bubble of like protection and stress around you of like not real world scenarios and so like when you get to college it's nice because like you have that test run experience of living with other people and making new relationships and getting to make mistakes before you're actually out there doing it yourself and it is hard I think for people who choose not to go to college or can't go to college um, that then you know it's great that they still have the career that they want and that they get everything out of life that they want but I think it's definitely a harder transition for them because they don't get that kind of like those four ish years of kind of figuring it out you're just once you graduate from high school you're just there and you're doing it and so I think it would be a lot better and just nicer and like a really good experience if uh-huh. you can still like have that transition time yeah sure. yeah faux shizzle wow. all right now going way back you okay. mentioned about how AOPI helped you with like resume building yeah one of the things that I got out of KDR and this is gonna sound really stupid <laughs> is I didn't know how to dress up Okay. So, like, when it comes to, like, the whole tux and the, the shirt, like, I was like, how do I do this? I like, remember like, actual, like, an actual tux <laughs> or, like, just, a suit? Or, like, a suit. See, okay. I don't even know the name. I was saying, well, where have you been to that you same, needed a tux? Same, <laughs> same difference. Okay. <laughs> um, but, like, I didn't know how to tie a tie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I learned how to do it. I remember my first time I dressed up for KDR. I I had all three buttons on, and they're like, dude, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. What am I doing? And they're like, you got to do two buttons, not three. And I'm just like, oh. What, like where your collar is? Is that what you're talking about? There's what like one there, there, and there. I'm like, why is there three buttons then? And they're like, it's, oh, it's gotcha. you know. Yeah. And they're like, oh, it goes back to the 1400s. I'm like, okay, well, it's tw- 21st century. Yeah. It's like, why is that still there? So, right. Yeah, yeah. That's, do you know, Think just think about this. How much money clothing companies would save if they put one less button on it for each suit that's nothing but if you were to make like 500,000 suits that's like you know Daniel you keep saying you're having issues like making you're giving me all these like great ideas like (laughs) take them somewhere all right here's here's one more really good idea you ready for this I don't think you're ready for this okay okay woman's jeans that have pockets oh shoot beat me to it jeans have pockets I thought that was, like, a thing where, like, all women's clothing don't have pockets. Okay, no. It's not but I thing. know where you're coming from. Okay. So there was, like, I'm trying to think when in my lifetime this probably was. It was probably, like, 
high school, I would say that this became like a big thing. Jeggings came out. Okay. Like jean leggings. Yeah. And those don't have those have fake pockets. But now jeggings are definitely still a thing, mm-hmm. but they've evolved and they they have pockets because Okay. the companies heard our revolution. Aha. Uh-huh. They, they heard our anger. <laughs> so I'm behind and they the, gave us pockets. I'm behind the game on that one. It's okay. Okay, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> but I appreciate your thought process though because Thank I mean you. there are still a lot of things like like when girls get super excited because our dresses have pockets it's because 90% of our dresses don't have pockets so if everything was just filled with pockets life would be easier true that that's yeah. why I only wear clothing with pockets when can you give me an example of men's clothing that doesn't have pockets <sighs> next question all right <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what is one thing, if you could go back, you would change in college? Ooh, this is okay. This is, this is probably not like my end-all, be-all answer, but this is the tour guide answer in me. I would live in Parks Tower freshman year. Same. I say this every single tour I ever gave. Um, it was nothing against like okay, just like throwing this in here. I loved my freshman year roommates and like that experience. That was not it at all. But it was just. The building that we lived in, living in Ottawa West, living suite style with like sophomores, juniors, and seniors, and also um, the football team right above our heads. <laughs> that was really annoying at 3 a.m. Um, when you're trying to sleep. But it was just like it was hard because no one interacted with one another. So it was, it just like was not what you see on TV, and it wasn't that freshman year living experience that I would have wanted. Like Parks Tower is, you know, like seniors in college and alum still talk about like their parks tower experiences and whatever mm-hmm. floor they lived on so i would have really loved to do that so if i could go back and change one thing that definitely would have been it i would have taken my three roommates with me and squished them all into a traditional but <laughs> um yeah i would have i would have loved to get to know the other people on my floor because instead you it just you didn't know anyone so like mm-hmm. ra meetings were always really awkward yeah because yeah. you didn't know anyone who was there yeah, so. I was in presidents my freshman year, and it was sweet style. And it's like when you're in sweet style, it's possible to like have people from other rooms hang out, but it's not as likely. It's no. kind of hit or miss. Yeah, I feel like with Parks Tower, even if you are um, on a floor where like no one's really doing anything, you can just go up or down a floor and you're set. Yeah, well, not only that, but also just um, the fact that it is all freshmen living there, That's, so they yeah. all basically want the same thing. Whereas like sophomores, juniors, and seniors, okay, like you've had your freshman year you already kind of have your friends you have kind of your set schedule for every single day so you don't go out of your way to meet new people like Mm -hmm. the way that freshmen do so yeah which is tough but I think that's one of the reasons why I liked my sophomore year living in presidents because I got roomed with uh two one two three freshmen and one junior so like they're all going through the freshman experience and I was like a sophomore kind of relive in that with them like okay <laughs> yeah yeah i think that's why fun. it was more fun sure but yeah definitely. so that's probably like my like my standard answer there's probably a better answer other than that of things that i wish i had done um let me think of something i wish i don't know i guess i wish honestly i wish i had like gone out more mm-hmm. i've always been like a very reserved person um and like quote a goody two shoes I guess and so I really there were a lot of like fun events that I didn't go to because I had to study or I was I just too nervous to go like not confident and just like get stressed out about like meeting new people and stuff like that I definitely wish I mean you know the whole life is short go have fun thing like I like I like I've definitely gotten good grades so it's paid off but also there were definitely some nights that I could have gone out and lived my life a little bit more being in college than I did um so I guess definitely doing that um maybe getting more involved on campus even though I was I've been very very involved but just there was there's always been organizations that I've looked at from afar of like oh I wish I had done that but now that I'm a senior I probably shouldn't start and then stop and if I don't like it then it'll be for nothing like I don't know there's just like little things here and there of like hit or miss that Mm -hmm. I wish I could have tried but you know, four years, you don't have that much time to do it all. Yeah. So it's hard. And, like, I know there's a cliche thing where it goes by really fast. And, like, so I knew yeah. that from freshman year. I was like, okay, got to take it all in. And, yeah. like, sophomore year, I was like, okay, yep, I, I know it's going. Mm-hmm. And here I am, <laughs> last semester. 
it really does go by really fast. Yeah. So yeah, and then you uh you do real real life and work and Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I so I'm like I'm going through like a, a quarterly life crisis right now where I'm yes. trying to like, you know. Yes, absolutely. There's um so with my internship, I'm there 3 days a week. So I'm there Tuesday and Thursday mornings and then all day Fridays. And it's just so interesting because I'll go from like college life craziness and then you have to like dress professionally when you go into work and then I'm there at my internship and it's like a thriving company of like successful business people and you have to act completely differently and it's like very very different of oh geez like this is this is not like what I was expecting and it's definitely it's it's different so it's just so different like how I act every single day and like how I have to change um kind of the way that I am when I go into my internship on those days it's yeah crazy yeah. <laughs> mine's, mine's like the most chill and I love it it's the chillest job ever that's I, nice so like you still have to dress up business casual and all that yeah. but like uh, you go into work you basically I mean every once in a while we'll just we'll, we'll have like moments where we just kind of chit chat and talk yeah. but most of the time I'm just like chilling I'm doing my photoshop work listening to podcasts <laughs> I'll have like a YouTube video up, up, up on the side I'll be listening to that <laughs> but like we'll have the the most interesting conversations so yeah. Sometimes they're not really work appropriate, but <laughs> <laughs> we're like, you know, like you just gotta be careful about like who you're sitting next to, but sure. It's it's fun. I yeah. like it. It's a very it's a very cozy, comfortable job. Yeah. But which is good. Going back to the whole quarter left crisis, I think with the app that I'm working on, that won't be an issue anymore. <laughs> so just give it two two years. Okay. And then How's that going? Is it still still thriving oh yeah i so yeah. i started it up like uh, about a month ago mm-hmm. and i've been in contact with launchpad they're helping me out i've oh, been that's good. uh getting help from um a specific person or people that are mentors that I will or will not name okay. for certain reasons okay <laughs> um i have so like i have like a whole binder right here <laughs> And the microphone's not facing my voice. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Huh? You had to cuss on air. You gonna delete that? Well, no, it was like, oh, shit. You know, like, oh, right. I didn't actually say it, so it's good. But no, like, I have a binder full of stuff that I write down, and have you ever wow, used... it's w- Toledo branded. How oh, appropriate. F- mm-hmm. <laughs> UT, you know. Have you... And, and eight. You're so, you're so, like, <laughs> UT right now. Your sweatshirt and all. Oh, yeah. But, um... Have you ever heard of OneNote before, Microsoft OneNote? Yes. Oh, my gosh. I just discovered it a couple weeks ago. I've never used it. Tell me about it. I like, love I've it. I've heard of it, but I don't know what it is. So it's basically a digital binder. So Ooh. it's like I used to just use my notes on my phone, which works. I guess the job done, like, I had one set of notes for daily schedule, one for weekly, one for monthly. And I still use that. I don't know why I'm talking about that right now because it's still, like, a, like a habit that I'm used yeah. to. But, like, it would probably be a lot easier to do it on uh, – the one note because the way it works is like a binder where you can create a tab for one specific thing and then within that tab you have different pages and folders that you can organize in that tab so for example I have one tab that is my startup and then under that tab I have different folders for like marketing um, ad idea or ad revenue ideas et cetera, et cetera, like competition so different uh, sex selection categories yeah. and the cool thing is that like the way it works is it's through the cloud so if it's on one computer that uh, it's basically on all computers you just have to sign into your account and you got it so That's it's cool. super convenient that is but so yeah i discovered that through the startup and it's it's a life changer yeah but yeah the app's going um i'm gonna be meeting up with people of certain backgrounds in the future. <laughs> okay. Wow, so, so secretive. But yeah, no, I got the binder out, and I'm not going to pull it out because my voice is going to go away from the microphone. But <laughs> so, like, I have all these papers where, like, I have people sign things basically saying, like, hey, I'm telling you my idea, and you can't tell other people. Ooh, it's like confidential. super confidential. It's all, like, business y. I, cool. I can say I'm, I'm, I am an entrepreneur now. <laughs> <laughs> not Crazy. really, but, you know. No, you're good. I am. Um, the initial step to become an entrepreneur. 
Yeah, you are. <laughs> I'm sure there's like some fancy way of saying that. Probably. Yeah. There's probably like a term. I'm a startup entrepreneur. Yeah. Yep, that's it. You're like the pre-entrepreneur. Can I put it on my resume? Yeah. But yes, that's going. <laughs> Do that. Put it on your resume. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that has been... It's like a nice little cherry on top when it comes to stress. Just like with everything I'm doing, but it is... It's, it's working. It's working. Yeah. But... um. It's cool, though. Yeah. It's cool that you're doing that. I think it's very cool. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, back to cliche questions. Um, I love cliche questions. <laughs> all right. What is your favorite and or most effective class that you've taken at UT? Hmm. Okay. I'm sure there's, like, several, but I think probably the one that's had – like the most lasting impact on my time here when I was a sophomore I took a class called um I think it was called like the official name for it was um health for well-being and leadership and it was over at the rec center and um oh god I don't remember what her name was that's horrible she's the (laughs) she's the she's the professor who leads um the other class that's in the rag that other Greek lay students are in all the time. I can't remember. Oh, uh, SWAT. Swat. Yep, SWAT. SWAT them. Yeah. yeah. So it's a class kind of based off of that. But um, it was just kind of the coolest class I've ever taken, honestly, because um, the two people who led the class just literally taught us how to take care of ourselves. And it wasn't based off of things like your basics of, like, diet and Uh, like exercise it was okay are you sleeping effectively at night what are your what like what is your finance situation right now and like how do you want to better it um Mm -hmm. it was are you involved in organizations and you were required to join at least one organization by the end of the semester if you weren't already in one um like are you interacting with people on campus how is your networking going it was just like such basic utensils of not only physical health but not only physical health but mental health in college and it was so much fun and we did these crazy crazy like group project icebreakers every single day and it was really crazy because there were a lot of football players that were in the class and they really intimidate me (laughs) and so like we'd be I'd be paired up with one and it was always like very nerve-wracking but they're like all super nice guys and um it was just it was just so much fun I loved that class because talk about professors who actually cared about your well-being that was that was that class um they taught so many beneficial ways of taking care of yourself and they talked about how daily you have um like a battery basically and like is your battery like charged 100 percent, or are you at like 50 25 and every single class they would ask like different percentages and like you'd have to raise your hand and like where were you in your battery life for that day and it was only like noon when this class was um and then based off your answers she would give you ways to take you back up to 100 percent by okay. the end of the class um and so it just like it was just so beneficial and you just felt cl- felt so valued by not only the professors but ut and these other strangers that were in class with you because you were all you kind of figured out you were all kind of going through the same stuff mm-hmm. essentially um And we were students from all different parts of campus. There were students who, you know, there were football players and basketball players. There was a lot of Greek life representation. There were students who were in marching band or people who aren't super involved on campus. And so it was like super out of their comfort zone. Um, So it was just really, really cool. It was kind of like watching the breakfast club every day <laughs> because like all different people came together and we we just like shared a lot of like really personal information yeah. with one another and i just absolutely loved it and i wish i could take it again and again and yeah I, I thought it was awesome it was sounds great. like a really cool class it was like that should be mandatory honestly I, honestly like i love my advisor shout out to lisa because Ayo. she yeah she wanted me to take that class um and i yeah i absolutely loved it and obviously you know like for people who are worried about their GPA, like, it wasn't hard to get an A as long as you participated. Yeah. But, like, I don't know why you wouldn't want to participate in mm-hmm. that class because it literally, like, put you in a better mood every single day that you were in there. It mm-hmm. was great. It was awesome. What year did you take it? Sophomore. Okay. Sophomore year, I think it was it was spring semester, I think it was. Um, but it was great. I have never heard of other people taking it, so I don't know if hmm. it's, like, still a class. I, I'm heartbroken if it's not. Um, but it's one of those classes I actually kept my textbook 
because the textbook was more of like a book than it was like like a textbook. Like yeah. It was more of a story of like lessons of how to take care of yourself. And you had to keep a journal um, which had like different handouts and stuff that we did in exercises and you would have to journal about like your life experiences and like what you were going through each week and like your highs and your lows. And it was just, it was just, I could go on and on. About yeah. It. Yeah. It no. it, was it sounds awesome. like, sounds like a really cool class. Yeah, it was. Nice. Uh, do you have any classes you, you <laughs> maybe we shouldn't ask that question. Oh, that I didn't we, like? we might have some professors that are listening. You know? That I didn't like? Yeah. Is there any ones that you're like, eh? Ooh, I'll say this. So my freshman year, I actually, when I came to college, I was an English major. Um, so I, all I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but all I knew was that I was a good writer. So I was like, well, I guess I'll go into English and go from there. Um, and really didn't want to go into anything math and science related. So I started in English and my focus in English, you can either do literature or creative writing. And so I chose creative writing and my very first English class, I was in a sophomore level class because I took AP Lit in high school and the professor was just she just like did not know how to take control of her class and she really let her students walk all over her. Mm -hmm. I would turn in assignments and she would kind of use them in class for examples, which was a huge form of flattery, but also why do you need a student's work who's a freshman in college to use for like your in-class examples? So, and she just really kind of drove me away from English because I learned nothing from her. Um, in all my experience, people who um, major in English or who are like English professionals are very passionate about what they do and I've always found them to be really inspiring and really determined and really kind of drive me and motivate me to work hard and she was pretty much the complete opposite of all of that when it literally so that one class alone I with before the end of my freshman first semester I had changed to communications which I love and so I'm happy mm -hmm. that it happened but it just really disappointed me because I've always loved my English classes and I really did not enjoy that one very much. So that was honestly probably my, I've had like other bad classes, but that one was the most disappointing because I had a lot of high hopes for it. Yeah. Whereas other bad classes, you hear the title and you know that it's mandatory. So you're like, eh, this isn't going to be great. And you just kind of know that throughout the whole semester. Mm -hmm. But that one I was just really sad about because I had high hopes for it. Yeah. But Good times. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, now, if you could have any job in the world, once you graduate next spring semester, what would it be? That's so hard. I'm, okay, I like, don't know what I want to do yet. I'm very comfortable in my major, but as yeah. far as, like, something I'm going to do with my major, this is, like, you're saying any job in the world. So this is, any like, job. very far out there. Very, okay. very far out there. I was searching through jobs a couple months ago, and I found this position to be the publicist for Marvel Studios in New York, Heck in yeah. New York City. Heck yeah. That would be so cool. And I just, like, was really looking at it for a really long time, even though I'm so completely not qualified at Apply all for to it. do this. <laughs> unless it's it, unless, like, 10 to 15 years' okay. experience, and I was like, I, mean, I don't even have one. <laughs> well, time out, time out. How long have you been writing for? How, have I been writing? Yeah. I mean, like since like kindergarten exactly so, like, so how many years is that okay but Six, being a publicist isn't like writing you, writing it, it has mean, yeah. to deal with like you literally like schedule events for like everyone in marvel and like you put them together and you're like the coordinator and you write and you like it's just kind okay, of everything well, communications related honestly did it ask for pub did it ask for like event scheduling years or like it English, just said it just said like eight to ten years experience, but it didn't say experience in what. Exactly. So okay. th that's your in. That's your in. <laughs> I'll put that in my resume. <laughs> I've been writing since I was like three, so. Because if they're just saying eight to ten years of experience, I have twenty-two years of experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, but yeah, that would probably be, I don't know, like like end all be all dream job. If like that's I, but I thought it was really cool and I love Marvel and. Any, like doing that in New York City I think it'd be super cool yeah that's one thing I learned while in Blue Crew because like whenever friends ask you like what you're doing and you can't tell them because you're like in this anonymous yeah. organization I've learned that lying is very difficult because it has holes in it so the best alternate method to getting out of those situations is you just need to extend the truth can you give me an example um let's think 
So I still can't believe you were in Blue Crew. <laughs> by the way, me neither. <laughs> so let's let's just say I was going out to California for a football game. Yeah. Right. I can Which get that, past that. That did happen. Yeah. Let's say it's over the weekend. My friends ask me, "Hey, you want to hang out?" I say, no, I cannot hang out, unfortunately. <laughs> and they say, why not? And then I say, oh, well, I'm actually, I'm going to be out of town for the, over the weekend. I'm going to be hanging out with some friends. Um, so, yeah. And then oh. they're like, oh, okay. So, you know, you're, you're telling them fair. the truth. You're yeah. just not telling them the full truth. What you know? do you do? My thought with that is like, okay, I know you don't have um, an iPhone, but like, for those that do, and they like share their location with their friends, and then they're just mysteriously at the game. That's why you gotta mute that. Okay, but isn't that suspicious if you mute it? For I every mean, single if someone's looking specifically event? for you on Snapchat. I don't know. I've just always kind of wondered about <laughs> that kind of thing. The thing is, someone has to be on to you for that to be a thing. You know. I guess that's fair. So that's fair. How do you like live with people? that don't know that you're in Blue Crew? Usually, like without they, usually they find out. It's not even say, that how I, would you it's not? not even that I tell them, it's just they usually like find out but kinda take the hint that like, oh I probably shouldn't talk about this. Yeah. Um Is it horrible if you find out that someone's in Blue Crew and then you tell them that you know? I mean you're not supposed to tell them. Okay. But I just didn't know. So like freshman year no one I don't think anyone really found out. My roommate did I think the other roommate... How do you, like, swear them to secrecy? Huh? How do you swear them to secrecy? Like, what do you mean? Like, do you just hope that they don't tell people, or... Like so, if, like, if I find out that someone knew I was in the group, and they start to, like, get all, like, hey, I know, I know, I know, I, then, like, at that point, I'm like, calm down, you're ruining it for other people. Yeah. So, like, if it gets to that point, then I'll, like, I'll butt in, just, it's kind of, like necessary evil I guess where like you don't want to ruin it for other people yeah so but like if they're like I know you're in the group and you're just like what are you talking about and they're like I am 90% sure you're in blue crew then you're like oh sweet I'm not in the group yeah you know? <laughs> but like it's there's only like one or two times where I had to tell them like yo chill yeah. <laughs> but that's I mean, that's good that you didn't have to do it. Though. Yeah. I would love to be in Blue Crew. Oh, man. I think that that would be the so much fun. Ever. I probably learned the most from Blue Crew because you're anonymous, so no one really knows who you are. So yeah. you're, you're not, like, afraid to be your true self. Yeah. And because of that, like, you're really able to grow a lot. Yeah. So I would say that's the thing I learned the most from was just being in Blue Crew, not being afraid to be who I am. And then, like, now that I'm not in Blue Crew, like, I'm still not afraid to be who I am even, like, yeah. without the mask. I think that's so cool. I, I yeah. That's, like, one of my favorite parts of Songfest is when you guys reveal yourselves. I get so excited. I think it's awesome. It's really funny because two years ago, no one uh, demasked, and then, like, last year you got eight. <laughs> yeah, why did no one demask two years ago? Everyone, Everybody wanted to stick around for another year, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. And well, no one was graduating. Yeah, that's why I was confused because Casey uh, unmasked at Songfest, and I was like, didn't she graduate? I'm yeah. so confused. Yeah, <laughs> so she, she graduated. She technically went alumni when she graduated, but she didn't yeah. want to be masked. She wanted to demask with everyone else, basically. That's fair. All right, well. Oh gosh, <laughs> six forty. <me. laughs> it's like, what was that noise? We have, like, three-ish minutes. I'm going to shoot some really quick questions okay. at you. I'll All right. shorter answers this time, I promise. All right, so this it's going to be game mode, really fast game mode. Okay. Do you remember when we did game mode? No. No, okay. Interview opposite day. I'm going to ask you questions. You have to answer it the opposite way you normally would in, like, an interview. So, wait, can you give me an example? So, if I say, how your day, how's your day going? You're like, oh, it's crappy. I hate you. Why are you even trying to hire me? Okay. Okay. But, like, you actually had a good day? So, it's like if, you're, you answer, like, if, you if you're applying for a job, you get an interview with a job, everything you shouldn't say at an interview. Okay. 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 Oh, this is gonna be rough. Okay. All right, Ashley. Why should I hire you to work here? You really shouldn't. Probably. I mean, like, I'm not that motivated. I don't work hard. I'm always. I'm late everywhere I go. Um, I tend to um, just kind of sit on my phone all the time, and I. Um, I'm really loud chewer when I eat lunch. All right. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know how to <laughs> What are your strengths and weaknesses? Ooh, um, my strength is that I never procrastinate. 
Um, I do my work as soon as it's given to me, get it done full force. Um, I take constructive criticism really well. Um, I thrive off of that. Wait, but that's good though, right? It's a good thing. Wait, I thought we were being <laughs> opposite. I'm bad at constructive oh. criticism. <laughs> okay. No, well, I'm no. So, wait, I'm being, I'm confused. Okay, next game. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm really bad at this. Um, okay. Um, so I'm going to ask you a series of questions that you aren't going to know the answer to, and you have to answer to the, your best capability. Okay. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay. What is the hypotenuse of a square? Ten. Ten? I don't know. Okay. What is the hypotenuse of a triangle? You don't know? I don't know. Okay. Is that, is that a really simple question that I just don't... Kind know? of. I, I told you at the beginning, <laughs> hey, math it's, and it's, science yeah, are my math. things. All right. Um... A, uh, <laughs> all right, this is a very common formula. A squared plus B squared equals... C squared. All right, you got it. You got, got it. that one. All right. Um, what is the uh, deviation of velocity? Why are you asking me these questions? Uh, not deviation, sorry. Uh, what's the integral of velocity? 10. <laughs> Correct. Okay. Um, <laughs> Wait, are you being serious? No, absolutely oh. <laughs> not. <laughs> I don't know what that means. All right, what are the variables for E equals MC squared? Like, what do they stand for? It's like, what's E? All I can think of is Einstein. <laughs> Einstein. Is Einstein. <laughs> I mean, he's a wonderful he is. Okay, so you, I you got, knew that. Yeah, you're good. All right. Um, can you ask me not math questions, please? <laughs> like, like um, real life questions. I don't, anything besides math. This, this is going to be What, what really does stupid. euphoria mean? Euphoria? Euphoria. I don't know. Uh, euphoria, having a phobia of use. I like it. Thank I you. like it. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, what was the score to UT versus BG last game? Why would you bring that up? Okay. I, good point. I'm sorry. What? what Do you want me to have <laughs> a bad day? <laughs> what, what are the Cleveland Browns' current record? Bad. Eh, yeah. But like better than their normal bad. True. So, improving. All right. Awesome. Well. They've won. <laughs> they've won like two. They're, yeah, years. yeah, two and four. Not bad. Okay. Hey, that's <laughs> like that, knowing me, that's not a bad answer. I answered that pretty well, <laughs> to be honest. All right. All right. So, that was our abbreviated version of the game section. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I messed it's, that up. It's all good. Um. So that's straight off college. You got a place you gotta be at. <laughs> It is 6.46. We're going to wrap it up here. Great. Thank you so much for being on the Thanks show. Thanks for having me. All I right. loved this. This Thank is you. so cool. Yeah. All right. Until next time. Um, go Rockets. Go Rockets. <laughs> and I think.